Well, let's get into some more uh, of these top headlines. One that literally just broke moments ago. Big news in Arizona today. A top election official here in Maricopa County is suing Kerry Lake for defamation. Stephen Richard claims Lake, who narrowly lost the governor's election in Arizona last fall, made false claims against him to raise money. For more on all this, we want to be joined right now by Tom Ryan, who's based here in Phoenix, just like live now from Fox's. Uh, and Tom joins me now. Uh, Tom, thanks for being with us. Uh, I don't know if you've read over or seen some of this lawsuit just yet. It just dropped today. Uh, if you have, uh, tell us more about it. Uh, tell us more about the complaints Richer is specifically making with Lake. I think a lot of people who have followed all of Carrie Lake's lawsuits over uh, her failed gubernatorial bid has probably seen her, her campaign officials, spar back and forth on social media like Twitter with Richer and other Maricopa County officials. Does Richer have a strong case? Uh, thank you for having me on. Yes, he does have a strong case. First off, um, the attorneys representing Mr. Richer are not only a well-recognized First Amendment lawyer here in Phoenix, uh, Dan Maynard, but also uh, lawyers from back in D.C., from Harvard. It's a very serious uh, thing that Kerry Lake has done here. It's one thing to say, I disagree with Mr. Richer and how he ran his campaign. It's quite another to attack him personally uh, with allegations of uh you know, theft of the election, conspiracy, and to say it over and over and over again, inviting people to respond with anger towards him. Uh, this is a very serious case. Mr. Richer, just so you know, uh, is a, a conservative Republican. He's a member of the Federalist Society. He's a lawyer that graduated from the University of Chicago Law School. He's a conservative Mormon. Uh, he beat out a liberal Adrian Fontes for this position of county recorder. And a lot of the things that Kerry Lake has been saying about him not only don't make any sense, they're set out of anger and malice because she lost. What she doesn't do uh, or what she has not done is explain how it is that Mr. Richard was able to rig this election so that she would lose, but other uh, statewide Republican uh, candidates would, run, would win, such as Kimberly Yee, our treasurer, or Tom Horn, our superintendent of public instruction, as, as well as within our county, Rachel Mitchell is our county attorney. Right. So she's done some stuff that's been very bad here that's led to death threats against him and his family, and she's used it as a fundraising opportunity for her own campaign. Right. So these are serious allegations. So short answer to your question, yes, she's in serious trouble right now. Okay, I want to put up a tweet. So Stephen Richer uh, just posted this as well uh, when we got news that the lawsuit uh, just came out. And it's quite a lengthy tweet. I'm going to read it here in, in full. He says, I'm suing Kerry Lake. I'd hoped the defamation would stop after the election. I waited. I'd hoped it would stop after the first election trial. I waited. I'd hoped it would stop after the appeal. I waited. It goes on to say, I hoped it would stop after the second trial. I waited. I hoped it would stop after she got a new job. I waited. But then I realized I am, all caps, the job. Defaming me is her path to campaign donations, speaking opportunities, and national trips. I live a very lucky, wonderful life, but these defamatory statements have altered my life for the worse, materially. And just because I live a great life doesn't mean I have to sit back while somebody says false things about me and says I did truly horrible things, things that multiple courts found to be false. I wish it would have stopped on its own, but it didn't. Uh, that sounds like a very desperate Stephen Richer there, does it not? He wants this to stop. He says he's received death threats. He's lost friends because of Lake's false claims. Uh, and we have to add here that Lake still believes she won the 2022 gubernatorial bid against current Governor Katie Hobbs, the Democrat. Um, so is all that, you think, going to be admissible in court once this goes through, if it gets there that far? Yes, yes. If you read the, if you read the, the complaint, it reads like a criminal indictment, honestly. Uh, you know, it's, it, she engaged in a conspiracy to defame this uh, gentleman, who's a, a very decent fellow, by the way, and she did it for her own personal financial gain. Uh, you know, the money's been going to her 
political action com committee, and it's also been going to her campaign committee. And yes, let me tell you something. It's not just Stephen Richard who's received death threats. County attorneys have received death threats. Uh, county employees have received death threats. I represent somebody who literally had to move out of our valley because of the death threats after she has been defamed by these election deniers. And they are they have lost at every level. And when I mean at every level, I'm talking federal and state. They've been sanctioned in federal court. They've been sanctioned in state court. And uh, they have not won one case Every court that's given Carrie Lake the opportunity to come forward with whatever evidence she claims she has, she has lost and lost big time. So, uh, yeah, this is a very serious thing. And she has not gotten the message, even after her attorneys have been sanctioned, for making false statements in court about this election process. Yeah, and it's uh, so interesting how a lot of these losses in court uh, on the Lake side, she kind of spins to her supporters somehow as victories themselves. I don't quite get that. We also have uh, the, the lawsuit uh, in front of me. It's, it's a lot of pages here. I have it. I'm going to show it right now. What about from Lake's side, though? Uh, can she claim uh, First Amendment defense on those grounds, do you think? Does she have any sure. standing there? Sure, she can. She can claim First Amendment defenses. She can claim that uh, you know Stephen Richard is a public official, and therefore there's a heightened standard of uh, proof that that he will have to get around. All of that's all of that's relevant. But here's what's most likely going to happen. Uh, it's important for your viewers to understand. Just because he's a public official doesn't mean he has no right to bring an action for defamation. What it does mean is he's going to have to show the following things by clear and convincing evidence. That's a very high standard, uh, but he's going to have to show that the statements were false. He's already got court decisions backing him up both at state and federal level. Everything she said about him is false. And then she has to show malice. And when you look at those videotapes, the, the press conferences she's posted, she has spoken with such you know, vitriol and anger and malice towards Stephen and Bill Gates and others. There's no question a jury of uh, reasonable people will look at that and say, yeah, she's angry and she's speaking with malice and everything she's saying is false. Yeah. She is in Tom, serious trouble. Tom, so uh, all of these previous court cases, and there have been so many that Lake has brought, uh, you know, trying to uh, litigate her election loss there. Do you think those will be brought up in the course uh, of this defamation case, if it gets that far to trial, can Richard's team of attorneys say, look at this very, very long list? Because he was a very kind of instrumental part of a lot of those previous lawsuits. That is that is a great point. Absolutely, they'll be able to bring those in because every one of those cases that she has lost, every one of those court decisions that, that came down against her is evidence that she was she was on notice that everything she was saying about Stephen Richer was false. So yes, it will come in. I, I, I don't know how she's going to get around that. Uh, and here's her problem. Beyond just the fact that she's lost every court case, not one of the usual Republican election law lawyers have stepped up and said, I will represent you, Carrie Lake. They've all run away from her. Uh, you know, like somebody from a skunk. They they don't want to be around her. They don't want to be part of her campaign. And so she's left with such things as people who do divorce cases, uh, you know, non-traditional election law lawyers. And she has been poorly served as a result. Uh, she's not getting great election law advice, and she that's why she's losing every one of her cases. Well, aside from the fact that she doesn't have any evidence to support the allegations that she's been making. Yeah, definitely. And we, uh, you know, continue to reiterate here that uh, Carrie Lake still maintains that she believes she won the 2022 gubernatorial contest uh, between her and Katie Hobbs. And uh, we have been reporting here on Live Now from Fox some of the updates from some of the lawsuits that she has brought time and time again uh, in court, especially in Maricopa County, uh, to which she has overwhelmingly suffered a lot of defeats there. And we here await any Lake response to this lawsuit from Stephen Richer. Uh, we haven't seen that just yet. I'm sure uh, she will issue some type of uh, response to this as she now has to fight this as well. Tom Ryan, we appreciate your time here on this uh, you know, uh, Thursday night, and we'll talk again. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.
All right, hope you found that conversation interesting there. Obviously, that's uh, a local story that we wanted to get to here in Arizona. Live now, look there over the valley. Uh, let's take a quick commercial break. We'll see you in two minutes.